Hello YouTube, so today I thought I'd make a quick video about this project that I have here, which is pretty interesting. So as you can see, this motor is moving right here, and I'm actually moving this motor using this Arduino Nano right here and a couple of event channel MOSFETs. So what you might see about this motor is this motor is actually an, an AC induction motor, which means it's supposed to basically just be plugged into the wall. It's actually for a, a fan. And how it works is that you just have this spinning thing right here, and this thing is an electromagnet. And what it does is it's uh, supplied by an, an AC current. So as the, the current alternates, the magnetic field of this electromagnetic magnet goes up and down and that's how the motor spins. But here I, I'm actually powering it using a PC power supply and that's actually 12 volts. So what it's doing is it has 12 volt power supply and it goes into this Arduino which controls these two end channel MOSFETs and these basically just switch on and off these two MOSFETs and those MOSFETs go to the electromagnet right here. The neat thing about this induction motor is that this uh, magnet part is center tapped which means that that there's a coil of wire and this part that the positive is connected to actually goes to the center of a wire and these are on the edges of the wire. So what that means is that you don't really need a full H bridge to control it, you could just use two MOSFETs because since the negative is connected at either one of these ends and uh, it's switching in between them and the was it 50 milliseconds? Yeah, every 50 milliseconds it switches in between them. So because of that, it just switches the magnetic field like that. I, I, I don't know if I'm explaining it very well, but that's what it's doing. And that's how the motor is spinning right here, as you can see. So one thing that I also have with this is this is supposed to be run off of 120 volts. I'm running it off of 12 volts in addition, it's more of a square wave than a sine wave, but it still works regardless. So one thing that I can do to make it more powerful, you see it's not very powerful right now, I could just very lightly tap it. It has very low torque. It's not very good at all. Is that I actually have the power supply is not directly connected to the PC power supply. It's wired in series with this transformer over here. And yeah, it could connect this up. And that's actually an R12 volt power supply. Uh, another thing is, uh, since these power supplies are galvanically uh, isolated from the the uh, line voltage, I could wire them in series just fine. And you can see it's still spinning, but this would have stopped the motor before. And it's still, you know, I could still stop it. It's it's, it's not really having a lot of torque there, but I just thought it was interesting that I could get this induction motor moving using such simple parts. So here's the Arduino code right here. I could screen capture it, but I'm too lazy to. So yeah, it's basically just the uh, the uh, button script, and I modified that. So then it's, instead of being pushed by a button and turning on an LED, it just has has these two states that, that it's in and it flips in between every 50 milliseconds. So it, it basically just what I said, every 50 milliseconds, either this one's high or this one is. And that allows our motor here to spin. And let's actually measure the voltage. So this is a multimeter right here and we're going to measure the voltage at the motor. And one thing that we have to do is it's, is, well, I'll show you right here, is that when we measure the voltage right here, is that 
they're doing these two. You can see that it's just reading null volts. Says ten volts. But yeah, so uh, that's because it's measuring in DC. Now we're gonna measure in AC, and, and it should say actually what it is, and it should be twenty four volts. Okay, twenty one volts. Measuring these two. Thirteen point. Okay, so maybe it's not exactly center tapped. I'm not sure. I, I just pulled this motor out of the trash, really. So I'm, I'm, I'm not an expert on DC induction motors. And uh, just for an interesting part, let's measure it into these two. And this, uh, 32. So it's not actually 32 volts. I think what's happening is it might be that this is kind of acting like a transformer so when one of these is not connected either this one or this one uh, the yellow and the and the red wire are never connected at the same time so maybe what it's doing is it's actually working as a transformer and when one of these is connected it's inducing a current in the other one and then it's making some funny business right there but either way, the motor spins, and that's really all I've got in it to do. It spins, it's spinning in this direction, like this. I wonder if I could... Yeah, it's still spinning in this direction. And even if I try to spin the other way, it's still spinning in that direction. So maybe if I reverse the polarity, I could get it to spin in the other, uh, other direction. But that's just how it is right now. Uh, more information on these MOSFETs, these are IRF Z44N MOSFETs. They're just the basic end channel MOSFETs. They can go up to 50 volts. Oh, right now, as I said, we're supplying them with 24 volts, roughly. And this is a 120 volt motor. So if we actually wanted to seriously make, uh, make this thing spin, we need probably bigger MOSFETs and even uh, these MOSFETs don't have any heat sinks on them besides the, the built-in ones and they're, uh, they're not really that warm though I will say this one is warmer than the other one I guess that one to the theory of not being exactly center tapped I'm not sure and you can see I have two capacitors right here this was because I used to have, have this MOSFET uh, this one right here that I can't seem to reach. This one used to be connected, but it burnt out because of the uh, back EMF, as I suspect. So I'm, I'm trying to see if adding a couple capacitors will solve that problem, just by connecting a capacitor in between this wire and ground. So instead of burning out the MOSFET, it could charge the capacitor instead. I, I'm not exactly sure. So yeah, that's how it's going. I have this magnet here, and just I don't know if you could see it, but I can definitely feel the magnet. Yeah, the magnet is being drawn and pushed away as this electromagnet goes like that. So, yeah, just while we're This magnet doesn't really seem to affect the rotation of the motor that much. Not doing a whole lot. Um, if you could see right here, is that this is like an electromagnet, and this is a uh, electrical steel, so it kind of puts the magnetic field along here as well. And one thing about these induction motors is that they are very quiet. The noise that you're hearing is from the, from the fan of this power supply. This is, these motors are extremely quiet. And that's actually why they're used a lot in fans and stuff. 
Just anything that would have to run a long time would use an induction motor as opposed to a universal motor, which are much louder. And that mostly has to do because this motor is brushless. As you can see, it's just a couple bearings on either edge, and it just spins very slowly. So I just, as I said, this motor is basically garbage that I have. One thing that I might try to do with it is I might try to make a, a vinyl record player using this motor. That might be a good application for it. Though I definitely have to find a better way of driving it. It's going to have to actually have 120 volts going through it. And it's even 20 volts. It's, it's, done, it's not a lot of torque and it's not very fast. This coil is the coil's a bit warm actually. Maybe I need to um, adjust the timings, I guess. Which is kind of weird. This coil is hot, even though it's running at a small fraction of the voltage it should be running at. Maybe that's because it's supposed to be driving a fan and the fan's supposed to be cooling it. But either way, so this is just the project I've been working on today. I'll see you in the next video, maybe about my robot or something else. But this was something that I thought was interesting, and I'm glad I could have showed to you today. See you next time.